I last saw you five months ago, I worked out at Download Festival. Can you believe it's been five months? No, I can't. I can't. I mean, you know, they always say that time is just a construct or whatever, but it's hard to believe that it's been five months of a uh, of construct. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like it was like really, like last month. Yeah, you know? that's what I feel yeah. like. But yeah. I guess your life's a bit of a whirlwind at the moment. We were just saying, you've yeah. got a lot on your plate mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah, it's been pretty crazy. Um, but at the same time, I guess a lot of it, I mean, in most ways, the, this stuff, I guess, I've kind of brought on myself, obviously, yeah. you know, like trying to um, release bands, albums and videos and purchasing a house. But I feel like you kind of need a place to live. So Yeah, it's quite important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's been pretty crazy, but it's, it's good. The crazy thing about it, that, I've been, that I was kind of mentioning was when I go on stage, it's fine. Mm. I go on stage and I feel fine, and and I think a lot of it has to do with the the that feeling of acceptance in in the way that I don't know if people can tell that I'm I don't know like tightly wound, but mm. I don't know. If people are very accepting of, of of how I am performing and how I seem to be on stage. So that's been really helpful. It's crazy because you know before it I'm like. Oh, it's crazy. Go on stage, it's pretty great, and then I come off stage, it's right back into the madness. Yeah. So it's kind of jarring. Yeah. You know? Do you tell people, like in your team, people around you, that look, I've got a lot going on at the moment. So if I am a bit weird when yeah. I come off stage, or yeah. if I am a bit short with you, yeah. please don't take it personally. Yeah, I, I have to because um, before I d used to not say anything mm. at all to anyone, and I would try to pretend like everything was chill all the time. Yeah. And it just wasn't good for me. Um, and then there might be the occasional me being short with someone or acting in a way that I normally wouldn't. And there's no real justification for it. So it's like, oh, he's just a dick. You know, so um, now I try to be open and transparent without asking them to worry. I'm just like, look, shit is crazy. Um, I'm dealing with it. It should be straight, but I'm just... There's a bunch going on right now. Just, just so they can understand me. Yeah, just making people aware, isn't it? Yeah. Situation. Yeah, I used to think that I used to think that my burdens would become burdens, especially in this scenario or this environment with like being in a band and having to take care of certain things and be responsible for certain things. Mm -hmm. But now I just go, I don't know. And I think it makes it easier for everyone else to do the same. Yeah. You know, I think that we've all been able to talk to each other in a way that's very, very open and transparent, which has been super helpful. Um, and we get to talk, so we don't have any real tension in this camp um, because we just talk about it quite quickly, which is good. That's good. And yeah. you know when you have had those perhaps those short snippy moments, yeah. are you someone that beats yourself up about that? Can you give, take yourself off the hook a little bit, or do you let it dwell on it and go, oh, why did I do that? Why? Yeah, no, I definitely do that. I definitely, yeah. definitely go like, fuck, I shouldn't have done that. Mm. And then. But the way that I get myself off the hook is just tell the person I know that I was wrong. Yeah. You know, instead of like just being like, shit, oh, I was fucked up, like, oh, whatever. And then I pretend like I don't know that it was fucked up. Yeah. I'll, I'll usually, I actually just had that happen recently. Um, my wife owns a hotel at home and I invited all these people over to the hotel and just like kind of like made it seem like no one had to pay, but it's my wife's business. <laughs> oh, no. I'm like, yeah, fucking just come on, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then I was talking to my wife and telling her, she's like, yeah, yeah, well, we can give them a discount. I was like, oh, fuck, that's right. I didn't even tell them, like, oh, we have to charge them. So I hit them up and they're like, okay, we just, that's kind of weird. We just didn't know. I was like, fuck, I'm so sorry, honestly. And then I had to, just to hit everyone up individually and be like, look, I was just so excited. <laughs> and I got a little too worked up. And I kind of, I, I went and, for me to forego my wife's business is wrong. That's wrong. It's also wrong for me to, like, kind of make you guys assume that it wasn't a thing, so yeah. I'm kind of double wrong here, and I'm oh. just like, I want to apologize to everybody, and then and then we made it happen, it was all good, and everyone had a great time. And it all came from a good place, though, yeah, that's oh, it, yeah, all the intentions sure. were good. Like I was just too excited to yeah. my friends, yeah, it's just crazy, because I don't get to see them that often anymore, you know, because of touring and mm. um, other things in life, yeah. Do you find, like, guilt is a common feeling that you have, because I think people that are on the road a lot, mm. and in an industry that doesn't actually provide stability, it's no. not consistent financially yeah. so it's hard to sometimes justify to people why you do these sorts of jobs yeah, yeah. so do you find that kind of a, a pressure and a stress um I'm trying to find a way to put this mm. I feel no guilt because I think that I do 
need to find a way to fulfill myself in order to be the person I need to be to the people I love and mm-hmm. care about and yeah. just to be to the world. I think I need to be happy with myself and what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, first and foremost, in order to take care of anyone, to help anyone. Mm. But I do feel um, there's a really large sense of, uh, there's like a lot of loneliness. Um, and maybe there's a way that I can establish a sense of comfort being away from my family the way I do now, but I'm very it's very new to me. Mm. You know, my son is every week he's different so it's like a new element of fatherhood every yeah. week and when I'm gone for four of those weeks it's huge yeah he's only two you know that's um 104 weeks old yeah. and so I'm you know and throughout it I'm, I'm gone for a lot of those weeks and then my wife having to take on him he's, he's so into he's, he's like frighteningly intelligent and because of that it's a lot Mm -hmm. you know and he's so incredible and also so (laughs) full-on and so when I'm out here and the you know the the 22 and a half other hours I'm not on stage can sometimes become quite difficult for me now I think it's also difficult because I haven't developed the, the proper tools or behavior like behavioral reaction to that feeling mm. because for so many years I didn't give a fuck I didn't care I didn't care about I lost I lost a lot of things and people in my life before and I just didn't care I just was art was God that was it it's all I cared about and I did it for so long thinking and feeling that way and now it's different you know I'm different I care about myself differently I understand what people mean to me on a whole new level and what especially friends and family which is why I invited all my friends over for free without <laughs> yeah. telling them it was actually going to be charged. it's just that um, it's just different now and I, I think that it's really important for artists to be able to talk about that if that's how they feel you know I also said it when we when we just after we spoke we got this like award this mm-hmm. um, for this Kerrang award and Instead of being like, yo, thanks, you know, fuck yeah, we deserve this, whatever, which, you know, whether we do or not, it's not, whatever. The point I'm trying to make is I went on stage and was like, I think that this industry really turns everything into a competition. Mm -hmm. You're competing for time, you're competing for space, you're competing for, you know, um, your art, the attention to your art, you're competing against other bands and artists. It turns it into a sport, it turns it into this like really relentless forum. And I think that's disgusting. I think it's really, really, really degenerative, and I think it's really dangerous. And so, recognizing that, um, you know, I think that people should understand that that we're we're all sensitive, you know. And then a lot of us artists are a lot of times more sensitive than we let you know let people mm-hmm. see. And so, me now, I'm just trying to let people know that. Yeah, this shit, it's, it's hard, man. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's hard. I miss my kid. I miss my wife. I miss my mom. Yeah. You know, I miss my fucking seeing my sister. And, and my mom's not, my mom's doing well right now. And it's like, if I feel guilty, it's like, yeah, like, I guess if I were to feel guilty, it'd be like my mom, my son, and my wife, like, knowing they're having a hard time and I'm out here. Mm. You know, but, but at the same time, it's like, I'm out here so I can provide. You know, it's, it's yeah. so, I don't know. It's so ambivalent. So, yeah, sorry, long form. No, but do you think that is what kind of fuels, I don't know, how honest you are with the your lyrics and the things you say on stage and even in interviews? Because if you are taking yourself away from your situation mm. and sacrificing so much, you mm. want to be doing some good mm. and leaving a legacy that, you know, your child can be proud of yeah. and live within a world that's maybe inspired by yeah. some of the things that you are spreading. and. Yeah, I mean, that would be ideal. Mm. It'd be, I guess it would be the most ideal. Um, I just think that none of this would make sense if I wasn't honest. Mm. None of it. No. Me talking about how we need to change things and how we need to, to uh, embrace community and enhance community and be um, open and less judgmental. Like, if I was that, first and foremost, just the project sort of ethos, mm. it'd be the most apocryphal representation of art 
uh, that you could be part of. So that, so that I have to be honest with. Yeah. And then I think it's just uh, another way for people to make sense of why I do what I do and how I do it mm -hmm. um, by being honest. Being, you know, sometimes, especially recently, I come out later to talk to people because I want to see my son because it's like fucking just before he's going to school now, mm -hmm. you know, and, and when I get off stage or right before stage or whatever. Um, or I need to call home to see if I actually got this house that we're trying to get. You know what I mean? Like, which would be currently, like relatively, like a tragedy if we did it only because we need somewhere to live. We're having another kid. My wife's gonna be, by the time I actually get home, we get home as a family, my wife's gonna be like seven and a half months, months wow. pregnant. So like moving and, you know, it's just, it's just gonna be really intense. So. I just think being honest about that so people understand so they don't think that I'm just like fucking around or like yeah. at a bar yeah. kicking it with, I don't know, whatever. Yeah. People that don't give a fuck about me. Mm -hmm. You know, when there's all these people out here that really give a fuck about like saying thank you mm -hmm. and showing their support and sharing their stories and, and the power and like, so I think, uh, yeah, I think that the honesty part, that's the one thing I was just so funny you said I was just thinking about this today at the coffee shop when mm -hmm. I was doing work I was just thinking about what I want Pascal my son and our son that's coming soon to to know about what I did mm. I don't really give a fuck about him being able to tell his friends like my dad was in a band or like my dad was cool or my dad was a, like in rock and hip hop and shit like that I don't really I know it's crass, I just don't give a fuck about that. Like, yeah. I really don't. I, I, I hope that he goes, my dad, you know, flew when he had one day off from Denmark home and then went back from Denmark to LA to Boston because he wanted to see my family. And then, and then not because I want the accolade of like the, the father award. I, I want him to go, my dad gave a fuck about me. Mm. My dad gave a fuck about our family. So he takes that and he understands, what's it, he understands what it is worth to give a fuck about something yeah. and to try really fucking hard when you care about things and to make sure that those things know you care about them so that the cycle that perpetuates is one of benevolence and love and care and consideration and not that of selfishness and self-aggrandizing and things like that. I think we have enough of that. Mm -hmm. um, so and, that. And kids pick up everything, don't they? They, they do notice even those things you think that, oh, I'm, they're too young. I'm telling you, yeah, they they're, know. they're little geniuses, man. Yeah. I call them every day while we're doing sound check. He's like requesting songs and like calling things out. And I mean, this boy is just like, it's extraordinary. It's remarkable. But I think you're right, Sophie. It's like, they, they do pick up everything and you don't have to say anything. That's what's crazy, right? I think the, the sort of marvel and the wonder of children early on is that you realize how energy driven we are and how we, re how we receive energy. It's incredible, man. My, my son is the most... He's one of the most like strong-willed, which can then dress itself as stubbornness. A lot <laughs> yeah. of people I know, but also so I am too. I'm extremely, extremely stubborn in a lot of ways. My wife too. And um, when my son is acting in this this way, you think that he'll he'll he won't stop, but you give him a type of energy, and he immediately switches. And instead of me yelling, so I, I was raised very differently than the way I raised my son. And I just speak to my son. I don't put my hands on him. I don't, I don't cut him down. I don't condemn him necessarily. I give him a reason for everything, even though he's two. I give him a reason. This is why we're doing this. And um, we, our relationship is, uh, I don't know, I think it's very good because of that, because of explanation. So just like I explain to my son things, I try to explain to everyone else why. I'm doing the things I do. And sometimes they're not, maybe that's not what someone wants. You know, maybe what I'm doing is not what they want. Yeah, inconvenient what you're doing. It sometimes. may be inconvenient, yeah. yeah. And I, I understand that. Like if someone's outside waiting to um, say what's up, you know, and, I, and I'm on the phone with my kid, mm. I know that you would much rather me not be on the phone. Not to say you want me to get off the phone with my kid, yeah. but I know people would rather, or I, I would assume that someone would rather I was just kind of free and I was out there talking and I would love that. Yeah. But you know, things are different now and I have to make sure. Yeah, yeah, it's the priorities, yeah.